Welcome everyone to Juno with Just Commentary. So we're gonna check out a video entitled Loneliness. Loneliness. It's a long video, so I'm not gonna talk much before the video, but loneliness affects many of us. A lot of persons go through that situation of loneliness and depression where they just want someone to talk to, someone to hug, someone to express their feelings to, someone to just vent with. You know what I mean? So it affects us all. So let's see what this video is going to be about. And I do hope indeed that if you're suffering from loneliness and depression, that you find someone you can speak with, you could um, explain your situation to someone, you could just get a hug from someone who can comfort you in the time of loneliness and depression. Um, so I really hope that this is a video in regards to this because loneliness is affecting a lot of us, okay? Thank you so very much. Let's go ahead. So let's Everybody see. feels loneliness. lonely from time to time. Yes, we when do. When we have no one to sit next to at lunch, when we mm. move to a new city, True. or when nobody has time for us at the weekend. Wow. But over the last few decades, this occasional feeling has become chronic for millions. In the UK, 60% of 18 to 34 year olds say they often feel lonely. Wow. In the US, 46% of the entire population feel lonely regularly. The entire population. We are living in the most connected time in human history. True. And yet, an unprecedented number of us feel isolated. Being lonely and being alone are not the same thing. You can be filled with bliss by yourself and hate every second surrounded by friends. <laughs> Loneliness is a purely subjective, individual experience. If you feel lonely, you are lonely. Wow. A common stereotype is that loneliness only happens to people who don't know how to talk to people or how to behave around others. Hmm. But population-based studies have shown that social skills make practically no difference for adults when it comes to social connections. Loneliness can affect everybody. Money, yes, fame, can. power, beauty, social skills, a great personality. Hmm. Nothing can protect you against loneliness because that it's part true. of your biology. You'd have a lot of persons who have so much and yet they Loneliness there. is a bodily function, like hunger. Really? Hunger makes you Did pay attention to your physical needs. Loneliness makes you pay attention to your social needs. Aww. Your body cares about your social needs because millions of years ago it was a great indicator of how likely you were to survive. Natural selection rewarded our ancestors for collaboration and for forming connections with each other. Wow. Our brains grew and became more and more fine-tuned to recognize what others thought and felt and to form and sustain true. social bonds. Yeah. Being social became true. part of our biology. Hmm. You were born into Something. groups of 50 to 150 people, which you usually stayed with for the rest of your life. Really? Getting enough calories, staying safe and warm or caring for offspring was practically impossible alone. Being together hmm. meant survival. Being alone yeah. meant death. So it oh, was no. crucial that you got along with others. For your ancestors, the most dangerous threat to survival was not being eaten by a lion, but not getting the social vibe of your group and being excluded. To avoid oh. that, your body came up with social pain. Pain of this kind is an evolutionary adaptation to rejection. A really, sort of yo, early that is system to make sure you stop behavior that would isolate you. Your ancestors who experienced rejection as more painful were more likely to change their behavior when they got rejected and thus stayed in the tribe, while those who did not got kicked out and most likely died. Ooh, That's why gosh. rejections hurt, and even more <laughs> so, why loneliness is so painful. These mechanisms for keeping us connected worked great for most of our history until humans began building a new world for themselves. Hmm. Uh -huh. The modern world. The loneliness yes, epidemic we see mass. today really only started in the late Renaissance. Western culture began to focus on the individual. <laughs> really? Intellectuals the moved away from the collectivism of the Middle Ages, while the young Protestant theology stressed individual responsibility. This trend accelerated during the Industrial Revolution. People left their villages and, and fields the to enter factories. Is what is Communities really that had existed right for now. hundreds of years began to dissolve, while cities <coughs> grew. <coughs> As our True, world that is became modern, this trend sped up more and more. Today, we move so vast distances for new jobs, love and education, and leave <laughs> our social net behind. 
We that meet fewer so people in person, true. and we meet them less often than in the past. In the US, the mean number of close friends dropped from three in 1985 to two in 2011. Oh. Most people stumble into chronic loneliness so by is one. You reach adulthood and become busy with work, university, yes. romance, yes, and Netflix. Yes. There's just not enough oh, time. Oh, gosh, yes. The most convenient huh. and easy thing to sacrifice is time with friends. Ooh. Until you wake up one day and realize that you feel isolated. That you yearn you for close this, this relationships. Social, but it's hard to find events close and connections as adults. And so loneliness can become busy? chronic. While humans feel pretty great about things like Ooh, iPhones got it. and spaceships, got our bodies and minds are fundamentally the same they were 50,000 years ago. <laughs> Good food. We are still biologically fine-tuned to being with each other. Yeah. Oh, gosh. Large-scale studies have shown that the stress that comes from chronic loneliness is among the most unhealthy things we can experience as humans. Hmm. It makes you age quicker. It makes cancer deadlier. Alzheimer's advance faster. Really? Your immune system's weaker. Loneliness is twice as deadly as obesity and as deadly as smoking a pack oh, of cigarettes a day. Came from. You see The most dangerous thing about it is that once it becomes chronic, it can become self-sustaining. Physical and social pain use common mechanisms in your brain. Both feel like a threat and so social pain leads to immediate and defensive behavior when it's inflicted on you. When loneliness becomes chronic, your brain goes into self-preservation mode. Hmm. It starts to see danger and hostility everywhere. But that's not all. Some studies found that when you're lonely, your brain is much more receptive and alert to social signals, while at the same time, it gets worse at interpreting them correctly. Hmm. Wow. You pay more attention to others, but you understand them less. The part of your brain that recognizes faces gets out of tune and becomes more likely to categorize neutral faces as hostile, which makes it distrustful of others. What? Loneliness makes you, you nervous about others' intentions towards you. Hmm. Because of this perceived hostile world, you can become more self-centered to protect yourself which can make you appear more cold, unfriendly, hmm. and socially awkward than you really are. That is true. What can we do about it? Always the solution. That is If good. loneliness has become a strong presence in your life, the first uh -huh. thing you can do is to try to recognize the vicious cycle you may be trapped in. It usually goes something like this. An initial <laughs> feeling of isolation leads to feelings of tension and sadness, which makes you focus your attention selectively on negative interactions with others. This makes your thoughts about yourself and others more negative, which wow. then changes your behavior. You begin to avoid social interaction, which leads to more feelings of isolation. This cycle becomes more severe and harder to escape each time. Loneliness makes you sit far away from others in class, not answer the phone when friends call, decline invitations until the invitations stop. Each oh, and every one of us has a story about ourselves. And if your story becomes that people exclude you, others pick up on that. And so <laughs> the outside world can become the way you feel about it. This is often a slow creeping that process that takes years and can end in depression and a mental state that prevents connections even if you yearn for them. The first thing you can do to escape it is to accept that loneliness is a totally normal feeling and nothing to be ashamed of. Literally everybody feels lonely at some point in their life. It's a universal human experience. You can't eliminate or ignore a feeling until it goes away magically, but you can accept that you feel it and get rid of its cause. You can self-examine what you focus your attention on and check if you are selectively concentrating on negative things. <laughs> Was this interaction with a colleague really negative? Or was it really neutral or even positive? What was the actual wow, content of the interaction? Thoughts. What did the other person say? And did they say something bad? That is serious or did you add thoughts. extra meaning to their words? Hmm. Maybe another person was not really reacting negatively, but just short on time. Then there are your thoughts about the world. Are you assuming oh, the worst about others' intentions? Do you enter a social situation and have already decided how it will go? 
<laughs> do you assume others don't want you around? Are you trying to avoid being hurt and not risking opening up? And if so, can you try to give others the benefit of the doubt? Can you just assume that they're not against you? Can you risk being open and vulnerable again? And wow. lastly, I think that, your that behavior. Takes a lot of courage. Are you avoiding opportunities to be around others? Are you looking for excuses to decline invitations? Or are you pushing others away preemptively to protect yourself? Are you acting as if you're getting attacked? Are you really hmm. looking for new connections? Or have you become complacent with your situation? Of course, every person and situation is, is unique so and different, and just introspection alone might not be enough. If you feel unable to solve your situation by yourself, that is the longest psychological assistance. It's not a sign of weakness, wow. but of courage. However, we look at learning. I know this video is a long video, but individual problems solving to that's a lot of information to put in to deal with loneliness. It is something Why? that deserves more attention. Saka. Humans have built a world that's nothing short of amazing. And yet none of the no, shiny things lot. we've made is able to satisfy or substitute our fundamental biological need for connection. Most animals get what they need from their physical surroundings. We get what we need from each other. And we need to build our artificial human world based on Human that. socialization is critical. Wow. Let's try something together. Let's reach out. Oh, to another today. experience. Experiment. Regardless if you feel a little bit lonely or if you want to make someone else's day better. Maybe write a friend you haven't spoken to in a while. Call a family <laughs> yeah, member who's I know that, that works. Invite I, a work buddy I would for do a coffee. Often. Or just go to something you're usually too afraid to go to or too lazy to go to, <laughs> like a D&D &D event or a sports club. Everybody's different, oh. so you know what's a good fit for you. Yes, Maybe true, nothing true. will come of it, and that's okay. Don't do hmm. this with any expectations. The goal is just to open up a bit. To exercise yeah. your connection muscles so they can grow stronger <laughs> over time. Or to help others exercise them. We want to recommend two of the books we read while researching this video. Emotional First Aid by Guy Winch. Wow. A book that addresses, among other topics, how to deal with loneliness in a way that we found helpful and actionable. And hmm. loneliness, loneliness, Human Nature and the Need for Social Connection by John Cacciopo and William Patrick. It's an entertaining and scientific exploration as to why we experience loneliness on a biological level, how it's spread in society, and what science has to say about how to escape it. Links for both books are in the description. That is a very lengthy and informative video. Not quite sure if... Um how would I put it? Not quite sure if it is that I would um, really... By the way, the video was good. Let me just be all positive and make the positive criticism. The video quality was great. I like the fact that they were using animation to show different um, stages um, of loneliness and so on and so forth. What I did not like really was the length of the video in terms of a serious problem. You know, um, if someone who is suffering from loneliness have to watch this video for a solution they may not um or they may you know psychology is such a powerful thing but um they may not um but that's what i feel they may not because it's so very long and already they they will be in denial but i like the fact that it mentioned some of the things which i can relate to myself because before i would not if there's a situation where there's a group of persons on a on a bench or picnic table there and a single or there's no one on this one i'll go on the one where there's no one i don't really like people like they'll just go before no i'm starting to open up a bit more i'm i would just t totally avoid and go somewhere very peaceful or where i don't have to interact much and again it, it comes back to the same thing as you were saying i was very defensive i did not really want people to come in my circle at all or come within my circle because I was like, I don't know what they're doing, what they, 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 they could do, what they could say. Um, you know, sometimes it could be too expressive. They would judge me and so on and so forth. I was sort of reserved in a shell before. Um, but I've learned through, um, through the past, let's just say, 10 years, how quickly life can change and how much we are missing out when we try to be a bit more reserved and alone. 
we're missing out a lot. So it's good to have this whole idea of socialization, meeting people, knowing people, laughing to pe with people, and even making a difference in someone's life. You don't always have to be about you and some meeting someone to make yourself happy, but you know, helping someone else who might be even worse than you suffering from extreme depression and loneliness. A lot of elders, especially, suffer from loneliness. And um, so I really think in our whole society, young people should even interact with elders more. They should have more elders group, go out with elders, take elders, you know, to the beach and give them a drive around, these sort of things, because there's a lot of elder loneliness. Okay, so I just thought I would share this with you guys. Of course, that was a great video. And the only thing I don't like is a very long video for a serious problem. That's it. Not a long video that for me to watch, but a long video for a serious problem. Okay, thank you so very much for your question. Like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter. If you want me to react to the video, leave a comment below. Thank you so very much. Bye, guys.